All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk through all kinds of different resources that you can use to build, create, design, and remix content. So I wanna start with the overall concept of open educational resources. And the items that I have on this list are mainly repositories. Um, so the OER Commons and Merlot are two international repositories. And then the Go Open NC is one that's curated primarily by North Carolina teachers. Um, it is focused on the, the Go Open NC is primarily focused on K-12, but there are a lot of variety of resources in there that can be used by faculty at all levels. So let's start with the OER Commons. If I click on that link, uh, it's a searchable database of resources that can include articles, handouts, presentations, modules, learning, or, or sorry, um, learning activities, learning objects, different things like that. So you can search, um, you can search by keyword, you can look at subject, there's a variety of different subjects applied, science, history, life science, physical science, so forth. You can also look at educational level, they have some that are specifically for graduate professional, college, upper division, community college, adult education, you can filter out by those. Um, you can do multiple filters across, and so if I do, let's do college upper division, let's do medical as a keyword, just a generic keyword, and do search. Then it'll bring up a variety of different resources. Each one has the Creative Commons license under it, so you can know how it's licensed. It talks about what type of resource it is, who created it, when it was last edited. Um, and so these are different things that you can pull down or link to or utilize inside of courses with students in a variety of different ways. So that's one example. If I minimize that and go back to my presentation, if I go to go open and see, let me close some of these others so it doesn't take up as much space. Go open and see looks very familiar, but if I go to grade levels, it's pre-K through 12. Uh, if you have early childhood instructors, uh, if you have education majors, they can go in and use this to create their projects. Um, and different things. So students can use this just as much as faculty can. It's a really good resource. Again, it has keyword, subject, grade, and standard. You can search by all of those. Um, and there's lots of accessibility standards, lots of accessibility considerations that have been taken into consideration with each of these resources. So I want to minimize that again, and I want to go to Merlot. This is a long-standing international option that has a variety of different things like this is one of your key places to go to for case studies i can go in and type specifically case study and i can find a lot of different case studies a lot of those are in the medical field but some of them are psychology on a variety of different topics so you can search through those you can look at there's a lot that are in here that were created and modified in 2021 so they're very very new, uh, very up-to-date, different types of things that you can use in your courses. You can have students use these. Um, teachers can build them into courses. Lots of good stuff in Merlot. You have different types down the side, e-portfolios. You can find research, um, different things in there. Again, a repository that you can use to secure content or procure content for designing courses. Lit2Go is a resource that Again, if you're talking about in the field of education or English majors or different things like that, this is a tool that they can use in terms of students, uh, even faculty, but it, it, it gives a variety of old literature that can be used in different ways. You can go to readability, and it does it by grade level, but you can go by books. Each book, if I go into The Adventures of Huck Finn, uh, it breaks it down. It has a PDF. A lot of them have audio files. Like if I go into chapter three, um, this particular one, I can listen to the audio of it. I can see the passage as a PDF. I can, uh, some of them have teacher resources that go along with them. Uh, so if you have someone who's, you know, needing accommodations in terms of read aloud, different things, and you're working with one of these novels, it can be played and students can listen to it in different ways of interacting. So, um, lit to go is really good. Uh, when you're talking about like K-5, uh, sorry, it's not going to let that one open for some reason. Let's see. Anyways, K-5 is a similar concept, but it is popular, um, 
movie stars, TV stars like Oprah reads a book, children's literature. Now, the thing is, they have to worry about licensing for story online. Um, you know, a story may only get a license to be able to use, be used for two years, so it may be there for two years and be gone. But it is, uh, they are working on getting some books up there in Spanish. There's lots of cultural diversity in terms of the content that they have uh, in the books, so that's a, a resource as well. What I'm really going to spend a lot of time on uh, are these open educational textbooks. And so one of the things is that when open educational resources, especially textbooks, first came out, they had a lot of people gave them a bad rap because the quality was not necessarily always there. But the items that I have listed on this, uh, provided on this list, have all been vetted. They were written by a team of experts, whether it be a four year college university professors, tenured um, community college uh, faculty, and a variety of different experts around the world have come together. So I want to highlight some of the different options I have on the list. So I want to start with OpenStax. Uh, with OpenStax, the good thing about it is um, I like to go straight to the anatomy and physiology. You can go up and click subjects and see they have math, science, social studies, humanities, business, essentials, uh, college success in high school. But the reason why I go straight to anatomy and physiology is if I go to the table of contents and I get to, I think it's, maybe it's 1.1. 1 .1. Let me, I may have to explore this a little bit. If I scroll down, um, one of the things that the book does, and let me, I'm going to have to get through, I think maybe it's the human body is that we talk about cultural diversity, which is a hot topic in course design right now. So when you get to the images of the body, I, th I think back to Mr. Goodbody, and we're used to uh, that person in those images being traditionally a white person in most of the, the books and resources that we have. But if we scroll down, we can see that there's different ethnicities represented, uh, male, female, and so forth. So you have... Um, that cultural diversity, that equity piece built into the course content. When we talk about accessibility, digital accessibility is setting up content so that it is uh, viewable and accessible to individuals who use assistive technology, whether they be visually impaired, deaf, or hard of hearing, so forth. One of the things, key items, is alternative text. So if I right-click on an item uh, in one of these OpenStax books and go to Inspect, when I do, I'm looking for what's called an alt tag or alt text, and I can see, if I go over, if I expand this just a little bit, I can see that there's a detailed description of that entire pyramid written out. So what that is, is if someone's visually impaired, they use screen reading technology to interact with images and content. And so what this would do is that screen reader would pick up uh, and read the description of that image so anyone who's visually impaired would still be able to interact with that content and so that's what's really good about these options now with uh, OER open educational resources even though they're full textbooks one of the things that I always tell faculty when they start exploring in this area yes it's great because you know if you start using these open educational resources then you're cutting down on student costs in terms of buying books and materials for courses and everything. The likelihood that you're just going to find one book that gets everything you need uh, is not uh, always going to be the case. So you're going to kind of remix. You're going to, maybe you're taking a chapter from this anatomy and physiology book, but then you're going into a psychology book and using another chapter or module from that course and kind of pulling them together. They, the good thing is that if I scroll down to the bottom, they do have references. They do have questions that go along with this. If I close out of that table of contents and I go back to anatomy and physiology, um, I can go back to the main table of contents, and there I can see uh, interactive questions, review questions. If I go into those, these are things that faculty can pull together to create assessments and quizzes. Uh, if I go back to the critical thinking questions, these will be good to create like learning activities, discussion forums, essay questions, all kinds of things out of. So they're already created. They're already there, ready to go. Um, I believe there are answer keys to them as well. Lots of good stuff. So if you go into OpenStax, again, if I go to subjects and do all, you can see the whole list. There's calculus, three levels of calculus, algebra, trigonometry, all the math type statistics, they're in there, anatomy, biology, physics, physiology, chemistry, 
uh, and so forth. So there's lots of science and math. There's some social studies, economics uh, type courses, and then some history courses, business, law, ethics, a variety of different subject areas that your faculty may uh, really use for different subjects. So OpenStax is really good, but I, I, I know I spent a lot of time on it. I want to go to some of the other resources. Uh, OER Open Textbooks, if I go into that one, that is where you can search to see what's available, similar to what we did with the OER database a little big ago, but this specifically filters out just textbooks. I'm not going to go deep into that one. Uh, if I go back to the presentation, I'll minimize this for a second. Milne Open Textbooks <coughs> is good for specific textbooks in certain areas. Again, close this notification. You can scroll down and see some of the titles you also can search. Uh, you've got a specifically a view all community textbooks, a variety of different things, um, browse by author, by subject, and so forth. Again, I'm not going to go deep into that resource either. I want to spend highlight a couple others more. Importantly, open, whoop, uh, open textbook library is another searchable. If you go down, you'll be able to search by this has some this gets into your advertising, sales, marketing, general business, professional, personal development, business, law, ethics. So uh, those type courses would be really good to go to this Sailor Open textbook. Um, uh, Learnix Open Textbooks and Supplements. This is specifically, I think these are more your business type. Uh, if I remember correctly, if I go down to subjects, I can see that there's business, economics, math, and statistics. And so one of the last items I want to highlight on this list that has probably one of the biggest varieties of textbooks is the um, BCC Campus Open Textbooks. And so if I open that resource and look inside of there, I have different categories. I have education, engineering, hospitality, and tourism, health and medical. There's a whole category on health and medical, dentistry, uh, general, nursing, nutrition, pharmacology. I can go into any of those and it has supplementary, supplementary materials that go along with it. I can click and see what those are. There's a variety of different things, all kinds of tools that anyone working in those courses or in those subject areas can really use to create and design and strengthen their courses. They're all centered around um, alignment between the objectives and some of the other things we've talked about in the other videos but really good resources that BCC open textbook. So I would, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing a presentation for faculty, I want to show all these resources so they can go through and kind of search those and find what they're looking for. And uh, one of the books that I used in an earlier video to show alignment or issues with alignment came from uh, Open Learn. So that's another resource that's available as well. So we're going to move on to the next slide really quickly. Uh, these are some items. I'm not going to click to open each of these, um, but this is some stuff that you can use to help support accessibility needs in the institution. As an instructional designer, you can share these with your uh, faculty. And so the first is Google Chrome extension CopyFish. This is really cool because if you go back to the images, and if we have images that have text embedded, if you're trying to make those more accessible, you want to pull the text out of those images and either link to a document or put that text in alternative in the alt text box and everything like that. Copyfish will let you take a picture, a screenshot, and capture it and then pull out the text in a, in a copyable, copy pastable type format so you can interact with that text. It's just a Google Chrome extension you install. Uh, the text to speech handout is available for anyone to use. You can download that, share it. Um, it talks about how to use the text-to-speech feature in the three main operating systems, Apple, uh, Google Chrome, and PC or Windows. So rather than integrate a bunch of tools that are going to kind of read text to students and different things like there's ReadSpeak and stuff like that, uh, this is the better route to go because what you do is you're training students to use their own technology to kind of take advantage of it so that uh, it will read the text aloud to them. Uh, if you have like IEP 504 modifications or accommodations you have to address, uh, that handout will help students understand how to take advantage of that option in their operating system because all three major operating systems now have text-to-speech features. Natural Reader is kind of like a, an online screen reader where you can 
I think you have to copy and paste text into it, but then it will read that text aloud to you if you, you have someone who needs, you know, that kind of thing. Rewordify is where you can copy some text from like a high level and drop it in and paste it, and it'll kind of uh, adjust it uh, to a lower reading level. So that's another way that you can kind of modify the content for students. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily do that for everyone, but you could, within the learning management system, create some things that are only available to certain students, and you could use Rewordify to help you do that. Text typer is the opposite of text to speech. It's where I can use the microphone, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in an online program and talk into it and it will convert that to text. I can then edit it, copy, paste it, send it in an email, put it in a document presentation, so forth. Uh, same things with Windows voice dictation, Apple voice dictation, and then there's some information specifically on Chromebook accessibility features. So those are some links that you can explore to get more information. When it comes to images, I already did a presentation where I talked about, you know, adding in a variety of different types of people, situations, scenarios, cultures, all that type stuff. Uh, this set of resources gives uh, an example of where you can find really good quality images to use. And so the two that I use the most often are Unsplash, and I'll show you why. But if I go into Unsplash and I'm looking for, say, students, and I do that search and say, okay, here's a, here's a group of students. It's a little bit of diversity in that group. So I want to use that. When I go to download for free, um, it downloads to my machine, but then it also gives me what I need to use for my citation. So I just highlight that or I can click the copy. It goes to my clipboard and I can paste it in my citations with my content, bottom of the page, wherever, wherever I need that citation to go, to go along with that image. Now they are Creative Commons, so I can use those in any way but I really want to highlight the one at the bottom that's the Alliance for Excellent Education. And the reason why I want to highlight that is because this is where you can go to get a bulk of your diverse images. So if you go to that, you can search the images, but you can also go to Collections, and there you can have it out. You have Career Technical, High School, Middle School, Computers, English Language Arts, Classrooms, Outdoor Learning Science. You have a variety of different categories that you can use to create or to grab images to use when you're designing different things. Again, you have permission to use these. Uh, you can share them with students so that they can use when they're creating projects or faculty can use them as they're designing presentations or course content and everything else. So other options are Pixbay, Flickr, Creative Commons, and CC Search. You can explore those on your own. Video resources, oh, oh went too far. YouTube education filters specifically items for education. Khan Academy covers a variety of different subject areas. It's more than just videos uh, in there. They have lessons, course content, all kinds of different things you can use. The good thing about those videos is that they are all captioned, uh, so that means they're accessible uh, to anyone who, has, um, who may be deaf or hard of hearing or may require captions. Other students besides those who, you know, may be deaf or hard of hearing, you have English language learners or, uh, you know, anyone that may have, like, dyslexia or any kind of stuff like that, that you can use uh, the captions to help support those students' transcripts and so forth. In Khan Academy's case, those come in multiple languages as well. Bozeman Science, are videos similar that are specifically related to science. Senior Jordan is all about Spanish. If you have Spanish teachers teaching Spanish courses, there you go. Discovery, um, there are some things on there that uh, you can use. Annenberg Learner is more of your history. And then Crash Course, uh, is it includes some history and some psychology and some different things like that. So those are some resources you can play around with. Uh, but all together, we've covered video images, open textbooks, and open resources. So these are a variety of tools that can really help faculty design their courses.